Hey, this is Spike from DRI, and you're watching Rob 2. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Don't turn that channel. What's happening? Once again, this is show number... Uh, fuck. I just got fucking fucked up in my nuts right now, so that kind of hurt. So I'm still kind of feeling the effects from that. Uh, Rob to D2 Movie Collectors Music Show. 10-year anniversary. Welcome to show number four. This is show number four, people. The date today is November 16th. Well, I don't even fucking know uh, what the motherfucking date Yeah, is. I think it is the 16th. And here we are, once again, fucking eight, uh, for another show. Um, trying to fucking squeeze in the last of the fucking shows before uh, the year ends. Lots happening in the world, so there's a lot to talk about, so might as well just go ahead and... Uh, lay all this information out for you guys so I'm gonna go ahead and clog your um, airways for about an hour or so and uh, see what's on see what's on my fucking mind and let you guys know what's up uh, fucking a lot of shit happening in the world these days fucking uh, it's been a long time since uh, I've been over there hooking up with the guys and shit and the fellas so I wanna say what the fuck we have having company. Not good, so... Uh, fucking, uh... It's just fucking fucking me up. <laughs> so, ten fucking years later. Here we go. This is ten years later. Um, it's happening. And hopefully you guys are fucking being entertained. Uh, we got fucking Marty's fucking uh, Forbidden Zone. I don't know if he actually still does Forbidden Zone, but... Forbidden Zone is live on the airway for you guys, fucking whatever nights, you gotta fucking uh, tap into the fucking Marty's airwaves, <clears throat> there's the fucking uh, the almighty fucking webpage for you, here you go, here's our fucking webpage number, I don't know if like uh, technical, with all our technology these days, can you put our fucking webpage right here right now, <laughs> ding, <laughs> Disappear. So, once again, the day they fucking asked me to get on the TV show for you guys, it was a bad fucking thing. So, here it is. Ten years later. Uh, yeah, once again, I'm going to go ahead and mention that list, mention on the last show that I was on. Um, March, next year, for well, the fucking ten years of fucking Call Me Crazy, it's fucking Ray Daniel in his fucking finest. Okay? That's Ray Daniel and his fucking fighter. This is sitting right there. Oh, she didn't see it. <laughs> no. Oh, God. She saw the MP24. <laughs> That's why I was like freaking out. I was like, get out of here. So, <clears throat> congratulations to Ray because you've been doing a great job for the last 10 fucking years come March. Uh, I'm fucking, you know, all the way from Urban Sprawl to. Actually, I haven't seen his fucking comic crazy show for. It seems like a long time. But congratulations, Ray. You fucking did a good job on your 10-year anniversary there. Uh, call me crazy. Once again, I'm just fucking, uh, just catching up and shit on the, you know, fucking, like, a update shit. M Marty, 17-year anniversary is coming up, or it's already up. Congratulations for that. Fucking remember the fucking first day when I started doing TV with you guys. That was pretty fucking cool. Fucking Chris Duncan and Ray took me down there to downtown. And I thought they were full of shit. You know what I mean? Because you know how fucking Chris Ray is, Marty. So, just to let you know, Tucson and the whole warrior world. I thought they were fucking full of shit. And they were like, yeah, we're all going to do this TV show and this and that. So, you know, it's nothing much of shit. You know what I mean? Just to be a little bit of fucking. A little bit of publicity is better than no publicity, I always said. So, it was fucking fun because we'd be live via satellite, downtown Tucson, Arizona. Over at Pussy Gallery, fucking Gene Mott was there, and Luis Daniel, and all kinds of crazy motherfuckers, and we were doing live shit downtown. They were doing live shit and fucking grabbing by the boo boo. So, ever since I saw the fucking setup that fucking Marty had, I, w I was like, I want to be in front of that camera all the time. So, here I am. Uh, rubbing the Dolphin is in effect, so. Rubbing the Dolphins is going to be a fucking wonderful fucking thing. 
I don't know what he's doing with his rubbing the dolphin, but when they say rubbing the dolphin, everybody knows about rubbing the, everybody knows about rubbing the dolphin. I don't know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about, especially you, Gmot. So rubbing the dolphin is in effect, so get ready for that. That's yet to come. And also fucking little segment that me and Robin the Dolphin producer, director, creator, whatever the fuck you want to call him. His name was Jay Mott. We uh, came up with a comic strip that we wanted to write about. If not just a comic strip, we wanted to just uh, write a storyline about a fucking uh, um, a story. It was about what it's really called is called Bean and, bean and uh, or yeah, Bean and Cracker. The Adventures of Bean and Cracker. <laughs> I'm looking at you like you know about that. Yeah, so seems seemed like a little funnier when I was telling and we were creating it. But the Adventures of Bean and Cracker, which is supposed to be about a Mexican bean and about a fucking white boy cracker. It's like a, you know what I mean. The bean is supposed to be the character, and the fucking cracker is gonna be the white boy representing the fucking white boy. And you were the bean. And a cracker, and, and I'm gonna be the bean. And G Mott. Who's the creator for uh, Rubbing the Dolphin is uh, representing the fucking cracker because he's almost basically like white supremacist fucking white boy cracker. So he's gonna represent the cracker and shit, you know what I'm saying? So the adventures of being a cracker is pretty much in effect. Uh, I'm in the process of writing uh, this uh, wonderful. I don't know what you want to call it. Like it's like it's like the next Star Wars if you want to call it that. Cause you guys see like George Lucas, I already talked to him, I was like, hey, what's up, George, check this out. He was like, oh, he's interested, so, like that. Uh, Witchy Wearables, over on 4459 West 147th Street, where you can get your Witchy Wearables. Phone number 1708-389-1313, that's 1708-389-1313. Get all your witchy wearables there, okay? Uh, um, pirate ship. I was told to like put on the pirate ship, so. You gotta build your own model pirate ship. Ahoy! Yeah, we're gonna put this closer. Ahoy! Build the pirate ship! With cannons and sails, kit includes 34 step together, plastic pieces, paper sails, Jolly Roger flag, 16 page books, 4 ages 7 and up, R, scholastic, R. <laughs> there you have it. Build your own model ship. Uh, they told me you advertised for them, so there you go. Thanks, buddies. Uh, movies. We got some fucking pretty goddamn good movies, in effect, that I want to talk about. We got, first off, we want to talk about Dogma. Now, this is fucking Jay and Silent Bob shit, and it's, uh, pretty fucking cool. Has, uh, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, fucking Chris, Chris, what's his name? Chris Rock. Chris Rock. And uh, George Carlin, and it's pretty fucking cool. And it's got a fucking uh, Jan Silent Bob at the finest and shit, dude. As a matter of fact, uh, fucking as we speak right now, Clerks is almost like in the fucking next month or so. We're gonna have a uh, Clerks two on DVD, so get ready for that. Probably by the time this airs out, we're gonna have some Clerks out. Clerks number two is in fact, even though I fell asleep on it. <laughs> <laughs> For uh, kind of movie mu movie music, we got Josie and the Pussycats. Now, I don't know about you guys, but Josie and the Pussycats is pretty fucking cool. Especially like when they have the Archie series and shit, dude. You know what I mean? Josie and the Pussycats rules. I think I have a couple like like comic strips with some Josie and the Pussycats. I don't have comics with the actual cover though. You know what I mean? Like with a like a full comic of Josie and the Pussycats, because I'd like pay top dollar for them. So if anybody out there who has Josie and the Pussycats comic books, posters, memorabilia of fucking Josie and the Pussycats, send it to Rob to Dito Show. We'll give you the address and I'll buy it from you. If you got them for sale. 
Otherwise, you could just give them to me. And for the next movie, we got Starsky and Hutch. Features. What's his name? Snip, Snip Doggy Dog is in this movie. <laughs> so is Carmen Electra. And she's one fucking fine ass woman, dude. I mean, what I would do for Carmen Electra, I have no idea. I mean, I can tell it to you guys, but I don't think you guys want to hear it. Carmen Electra's fucking hot woman. Next, we got The Hobbit. But this is shit that's taking taking place before mother oh wait this is like all like before Lord of the Rings, the timeless J.R.R. Tolkien classic that meet that has captured the Im imaginations of two generations, shown in delightful animation. Embark on an epic journey with Bilbo Baggins into the enchanted world called Middle Earth, an experience for any family whose hearts and minds are young. J.R. Tolkien's the Hobbit, hour and 16 minutes. Check into that shit, people. If you want more information on fucking this fucking goddamn movie? You write to the TV show. We got an address for you coming up pretty soon. And now for my final movie, we got Old School Lord of the Rings. You see that shit, man? This is where it all started right here when it comes to fucking Lord of the Rings. Now, when you see this shit, you're gonna fucking laugh because it's fucking funny. Because if you're used to watching Lord of the Rings that's like up to date, like to this day, you know, you're gonna like freak out because it's not the same thing. So it's kind of like funny so when you see this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like old 70s shit. It's like old 70s shit, so. And. Let's see, let me get a good picture here. All the magical adventure of J.R.R. Tolkien's thrilling fantasy classic comes to life in this brilliant animated tale of enchanted land of Middle-earth and brave bands of hobbits, heroes, and wizards who set, to, set out to protect it. When a dangerous and powerful magic ring falls into the hands, a little hobbit... Right? When a dangerous... Never mind. Like that. <laughs> So, we got an hour and 33 minutes, man. Motherfucking Lord of the Rings, dudes. And uh, for my final movie, I want to give him some fucking badass credit and shit, dude. Because uh, they fucking kicked ass at it. But we got... Comic Diaries. So, uh, fucking A. Uh, I just want to say that you guys did an excellent job. I should be sitting down for this, right? And keep up the good job, Marty and Cliff. Everybody's involved with uh, Marty's products out there. Good fucking job, fellas. You guys are doing great, man. Keep up the good work. Keep on sending me them videos, too, because... Um, so, after that, that's pretty much uh, what we got here. Uh, Slayer. Christ Evolution. Illusion. Huh? Illusion. Christ Illusion. So, go out to your local music stores, you can find some new Slayer. It's called Christ Illusion. And, uh... It's gonna be fucking cool because they're gonna be on tour pretty soon. They don't got a Chicago date, but they got everywhere else probably date. So you can probably just look and see your local fucking uh, www.slayer.com, right? Probably. And you can probably fucking get more information on Slayer. So when I say Slayer is one of my all-time favorite bands. I've seen him play like fucking 16 times. Last time I went to go see oh, Rob Zombie though. This has nothing to do with fucking Slayer. I don't think I talked about, uh, talked about this on TV. But I went to fucking go see Rob Zombie. I was fucked up by the time I got there. By the time I got there, I was completely annihilated. And next thing you know, it, I was pretty much, I remember going up, heading towards the fucking goddamn front of the stage. And fucking next thing you know, it, I was getting beat. <laughs> I got beat to a fucking pulp. And, uh, next thing you know, I was getting hauled off in an ambulance to the fucking, to the hospital right there, like, in the Chicago area, like, by, uh, let me see, concert place was in Lor or, uh, Lawrence, right? So around Lawrence, in fucking Chicago. Lawrence and fucking, there's a hospital in the area, so I ended up going to this fucking hospital, recovered. Next thing you know, I'm in the fucking jail 
in the back in jail and fucking by five o'clock that morning they fucking released me so that was my fucking trip to fucking Rob Zombie. I don't think really never really got to see Rob Zombie. So you know fucking so maybe I should write a story and hopefully Rob Zombie if you're not if you're watching this right now do you think maybe you can help me out with like at least backstage pass or like a like a t-shirt t-shirt you know try to get to you guys to go see fucking Rob Zombie man but Fortunately, I was fucked off, and uh, I guess that had a lot to do with it then, huh, Matt? Oh, well. <clears throat> I'll catch you guys next time coming around. Uh, bears? The Bears are kicking ass right now. Now, <laughs> I mentioned this many times that I really am not a big Chicago fan, but I gotta give them credit. Bears are fucking, they got an 8-1 fucking goddamn record right now. So, they're doing good. They're like uh, on the Midwest, is the Midwest division? NFC. NFC division, they're fucking kicking ass. So, when it comes time to fucking goddamn fucking uh, Super Bowl time though, we'll see who the baddest team is. And if it's Chicago Bears against whoever, Chicago Bears are probably gonna end up beating the fuck out of them. <laughs> Matt said that, not me. So we'll just keep it at that for now. Uh, who in the fuck is gonna be? Oh wait, wait. This is this is first off. Eight and one motherfucking goddamn record so far. Okay, so they're gonna do a repeat of fucking nineteen um, eighty five. Back in nineteen eighty five when fucking Chicago was kicking ass and they were on top, weren't they? They were kicking ass. How old were you back then? Uh, negative two. I was uh, pretty fucking young. Back in 85, I was pretty young. So, this year, if you, if you guys want to write to the TV show, um, here's like a fucking, um, just a little trivia game if you want to write to the TV show. You ain't doing nothing or whatever. And, uh, you know, right to the TV show, we fucking have access because we live here in Joliet. As if we're not in Tucson, Arizona, we're here in Joliet, Illinois. And we're fucking, uh, Chicago's just our neighbor right there, and or their neighbor. And, uh, so all the information that we talk about the Bears goes straight to the Bears, and they hear about all this. I can't talk about the Bears without their fucking consult because they're, like, highly connected to, like, I organizations, and if I would, didn't get my fucking goddamn permission to talk about the Chicago Bears, then I would get shot. So, I got the fucking permission, they said it was cool, so I'm giving you guys this information. And they said it was okay for me to say a few things too, even if I was making fun of them. So, we want to know this year who's going to be the... William Perry, the bridge. Who's gonna have the fucked up team? He has a fucked up, he's a, he has a fucked up girl. Poor dude. Who's gonna be if the, it can can this year's fucking fucking all time motherfucking uh, quarterback, which his name is what? Rex Grossman. Can he compete to McMahon? So we're gonna see if your fucking guy Rex Grossman can fucking compete and be the next M McMahon. And running back wise, we'll see who fucking homie can fucking goddamn fucking that's who? Thomas Jones. They could possibly fucking goddamn compete to Walter Payton, the all time favorite, who never looked back, but once in a while, when he knew when he fucking kinda of figured a little bit, hey, I might be in a little bit of trouble. I better look back here and look back a little bit, but keep on running for that motherfucking goddamn touchdown like he was fucking goddamn running for motherfucking president. Like that? Does that make any sense? Also, how about fucking goddamn coach? Dicka can motherfucking fess up or at least fucking, you know, match up to motherfucking Dicka? I uh, know. We'll have to see. So, uh, hopefully everybody had a good time with the fucking goddamn elections of the United States fucking uh, government and all that shit. You know what I mean? And hopefully everybody got that out of their fucking system. I hope fucking everybody's all happy with their government. And I hope the government that's gonna be trying to make a difference is gonna fucking make us a difference. And uh, thanks for fucking goddamn raising the fucking minimum wage to a dollar. 
Glad you can afford at least that. Fuck. I mean, you know, all the millions of dollars that are fucking funded to the fucking uh, other side of the world for people who pretty much, yes, they do need it. But why don't we nuke their fucking whole area they live in, bring them the fuck over here, and we'll take care of them here, but get rid of their fucking place over there and maybe make their place a fucking new, new fucking world. You should but nuke it all, level it all out, and uh, start all over over there. But get all that fucking hunger bullshit out of there. So that way, it, you know, we don't have to deal with that hunger bullshit. We'll get them all over here and get them all fed and get them all healthy. And we can make the fucking world a better place because there'll be, like, that many people. They're gonna, like, lend an extra helping hand. And we can make a difference and shit, dude. If we just fucking play our fucking cards right and shit, dude. And, and all this terrorist shit that's happening... You know, if it's fucking so bad over there and wherever the fuck it's happening where a lot of us used soldiers are having to fucking um, protect because it's all fucked up over there. I say we should bring the soldiers back home, nuke the fucking place, but yet ask the people first, say, hey people, we're gonna about to nuke your fucking place. Um, I think you should get the fuck out. <laughs> and we got rights for you guys to get the fuck out, so let's go, because the bombs are coming. <laughs> You know what I mean? And then those who want to go, well, let's go. Well, those who want to stay and get fucking nuked, well, say la vie. And, uh, and then, like, we can just, you know, I'll get along. We'll get rid of the people who fucking want to be fucking goddamn fucking trying to be, like, taking over the world. And if the United States is going to be the place where it's going to be, like, the almighty motherfucking country and uh, land of the free and all that shit, well, so be it. So stay tuned for the rest of the show. We'll be back. Peace. All right, this is the fucking goddamn fucking music part. So we got Guitar Heroes number two. You guys, stay tuned for a little bit of uh, Guitar Heroes number two.
So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, fucking, um, that was uh, fucking um, Van Halen. You really got me from Diver Down. Yeah, I think it. No, wait, wait, wait. No, that was fucking from fucking first Van Halen shit. So, hello. Uh, we're fucking doing some video game shit for you guys. It's part of the music show since so it's got music on this video games. It's not every day that you fucking get video fucking plus music and entertainment of uh, us and them playing fucking guitar while they're playing the video games. The band segment. <laughs> so, you guys. Band footage. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Because this is the part that gets you freaky. And there we have it. And I think we've got like maybe 
How about one more song that we can go ahead and fucking for the encore fucking goddamn fucking play since we have to be, you know, just our, our player here has to be just kicking so much ass. So, c congratulations to your success in knowing how to fucking play this so well because it's almost like playing guitar, if you ask me. Too bad we could have paid. Uh, we had my son playing with Matt earlier. That was pretty cool. We should have been filming that. Yeah, that was fun. So, that was pretty cool. I should have been filming that. That was, yeah. that was a monument moment. That was pretty stupid why I had, didn't have the camera rolling. But, oh well. Here we are for uh, next fucking uh, song for you guys.
So this is Miss Kitty. She's a little bit scared right now because she wants to get let go. Can you zoom into this one though? But look at her. Ain't she pretty? Black cat segment. Now she wants to probably get get let go because this is her home, but look at her. Black cat segment. We'll be back. Uh, first off, before we get started with anything more, before the show ends, I want to say, I want to give props to, can we see that? Focus, focus camera, focus. It's all bright. But, anyways, gotta give the fucking props to my Marilyn. So... I always remember the day when she was alive. Those of you who were fortunate enough, by the time I came along, or but when she was like happening and kicking and gigging, I wasn't even itching my daddy's pants. Like that shit. Uh, once again, I want to fucking give a, a big thumbs up to fucking Marty and his crew over there to fucking, uh, Pond and Chill. <sighs> fucking, I wasn't a fucking. Yeah. <laughs> Bottom Enterprise fucking presents CBDs, the comic book diaries, man. Fucking goddamn Bottom Enterprise fucking presents CBDs. Uh, starring Cliff Campbell, Part of All, JJ Baker, Emerald Houston, Mike Cotus, Julie Schaefer, Chris Duncan. I've never seen Chris Duncan yet, Wait, but I have yet to see it, so. Mark Herman is Jeff. Written and edited by Cliff Campbell, Marty Catala, produced by Marty Catala, directed by Cliff Campbell. Copyright 2006, Puddle Enterprise. Also coming soon, uh, Nick Levine's Wargasm, number one, 350. I'm looking forward to my signed copy, fellas, so please send me my signed copy, dudes, uh, so I can put with my collection of uh, wonderful fucking comic books and my whole collection of shit here. Please, I'm serious, Marty, are you hearing me? Are you understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth? Give me my motherfucking goddamn orgasm sign. And sign it too, Miss my Kodas dude. That's the shit. So uh, after that we wanna give fucking um OJ. Let's talk about some OJ. Um OJ, you're fucked up, dude. I don't know what the fucking trip is doing. I think everybody's kind of pissed at you right now because you're like disrespecting the dead. The families that you're making fun of with their so-called... Uh, if I if I did, here's how I would have killed them. Book that's in stores right now, right? So you can go to your local bookstore and ask them about the new OJ. If I did it, here's how I would have killed them. Okay, so you can go fucking see how fucking OJ would have killed them, step by step, you know what I mean? I remember the day, and I was supposed to talk about this, I don't know why fucking my producer told me. I mean, I was asking you earlier, why the fuck do I want to talk about OJ, and you insisted, so we'll talk later. But, um, as I was telling you guys, fucking, uh, a producer... Was telling me that uh, I need to fucking uh, talk about this uh, when uh, OJ happened. Because this was back in the day. Me, Ray Daniel, and his family were sitting over there at uh, Ray's house. And we were watching OJ fucking flee from the cops on the highway in his SUV. Ford Bronco. Ford Bronco, or whatever. And uh, he was fucking fleeing. Fucking flying down the highway. And it was uh, quite like. Me, as a spectator, because I was sitting in Tucson watching this shit, this was happening in L.A. So, me as a spectator, if you want to call me, I was very well quite entertained. Thanks, OJ, for the entertainment there. But, now you got your fucking book called, If I Did It, Here's How I Would Have Killed Them. Now, OJ, you know, I ain't no big time motherfucker or whatever and shit, but... You're fucked up. 
I don't care what anybody says, that's uh, fucked up. I don't even know if I would accept your fucking autograph, dickhead. Just my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> so don't go fucking hunting me down, goddammit. Fucking goddamn pull no OJ on me and shit. Fucking OJ. Fucking Orange Julius, this should do. OJ, dude. Huh? Sorry I have to go off on you, dude. I hope I don't get fucking goddamn in trouble for this one, because now I feel like the curse of OJ is going to come after me. You know what I'm saying? OJ, you're almost like a fucking, like, Jason in Friday the 13th and shit, dude. No shit, you know what? Holy fuck, I just thought about this fucking wonderful idea, but it'd probably offend the family also, but to make a motherfucking comic book of how the fuck OJ went ahead and mass murdered those two people. I mean, who was it? I mean, I don't want to mention their names. Two people. He mass murdered them and just totally put it all in comic book form. Chronicles of OJ. I think I want to come up with, and somebody's going to probably end up selling my idea, but I want to come up with the idea for a comic book called The Chronicles of OJ. How about that for a fucking idea? <laughs> and we just like go step by step of what the fuck OJ was doing from the time he fucking got him living his life from when he was fucking fleeing from the cops on the highway. He's playing football. Freaking out. I wonder what he was... I gotta get like more information of what OJ was thinking when he was in the fucking vehicle running from all these police officers thinking, oh shit, if it would have been me, I would have been jacking off, smoking some herb, smoking some crack, I would have been fucking shooting some heroin, I would have been doing everything, taking some acid, I would have definitely taken like about fucking a whole sheet of acid, I would have just fucking ate a whole couple sheets. Go drive on the freeway. So I'm driving on the shit freeway, eat a couple more sheets if I had it, of some acid, eat some mushrooms, Eat some heroin, just eat it all just straight, just eat it, and just that way you can just go fucking insane, drive down the motherfucking highway, so by the time they got you, you'd be so fucked up, you almost just wouldn't know what the fuck's going on, because you'd just be so fucked up. <laughs> and that would be the shit. I mean, if you're fucking getting chased by that many cops, you gotta go down with the fucking goddamn bang, man. You know what I mean? I mean, dude. I would just be doing everything. I would personally be doing everything. There's issue number one in your comics. So, The Chronicles of OJ. Hopefully everybody will fucking goddamn like that one. You Please don't know, nobody fucking steal my idea. I already said it. I'm the motherfucker, I think, so far, who's probably had any balls to talk about this. To say that I'm gonna come up with the comic book, so... Probably have to change the name. It's like RJ. Shoot that. So you don't get sued. <laughs> so no no offense to the families of uh uh Nicole? Huh? What was the girl's name? Uh I should know that. Nicole Brown. So Chronicles of OJ, get ready for that. Somebody's gonna steal my fucking idea, dude. Before you know it, within a year there's a big Chronicles of OJ. RJ. Hell no, OJ. I'm gonna get sued though. You don't wanna get sued. I'm probably gonna get sued. So, by this time, I think fucking A, I think we, I can pretty much go ahead and officially say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Because we lived the 2000 year, 2006. We are now in the year 2006. I had to read over my script here because I'm fucking, I don't even know what day it is. Almost 2007. I'm talking even years, because I've been sitting around for that. As long as I follow this script, this is my script guy is over here to have in front of me, that's what's telling me to read, so I can be able to create this wonderful magic for you guys tonight, that you guys are witnessing on your lovely TV. Really appreciate you guys actually sitting around and actually giving me a little bit of your time to, you know, listen to what I got to say. I'd like to thank a lot of the people fucking of uh, uh, RPG Production Incorporated people who fucking helped make this fucking happen. For one person, number one person so far tonight, I think I want to say thanks, Matt. No thank you for your help, for helping me help this and put this shit out. Uh, I want to say thank you, uh, Marty, back in Tucson, and I was just passing through Tucson because 
this is supposed to be filmed in Tucson, so. Hey, Marty, I just talked to you a little while ago here in Tucson Studios, so. This is Tucson Studio. People down in the Tucson Studio. <laughs> Marty, thanks again for your help for uh, making this happen in our Tucson Studio locations and shit, you know what I mean? And sometimes we come live via satellite of, of other locations. And other locations are in the Illinois area, so. Hopefully you guys will like all that shit you guys see in Illinois. We try to provide the best for you guys. You know what I mean? Pretty soon we're going to be in the Sears Tower. I already promised you guys the Sears Tower, didn't I? I just got to get Matt downtown. I don't know if we'll have the camera. security and all. Yeah. Everything I think I'm supposed to kind of terrorist. We, we can go outside. Yeah, but I want to go up in the fucking stupid Sears Tower on the top and be like, I'm in the Sears Tower, this is it. I made it to the big time. You know what I mean? Since I'm such a star, I might as well fucking film in there. I mean, I'm a star. I demand... Who the hell do I talk to? Do I have to talk to Blagojevich or what? <laughs> so I want to give fucking goddamn fucking congratulations to Blagojevich because he did a fine job and fucking uh, goddamn conducting himself to become the governor. And he's the now governor of Illinois, which is a fantastic thing because here in Illinois, he's providing a lot of, uh, you know, special needs to a lot of special people, special needy people and shit, you know what I mean? Education, health, so it's all here for you guys and all health people and shit in the United States and hopefully with all that's happening in the world, we'll all combine and shit and stop fucking around in the United States. And all the gangs and shit that are fucking happening, all the KKK and all the fucking discrimination shit here in the United States can just stop and we'll just be one so that way when countries like Iraq, right, want to fucking fuck with us, we'll be like, well, yo, we're in the United States and shit, dude. And all I have to say is let's keep the war to the people on the other side of the world and the people who are over here in the United States this war against each other and all these gangs against each other, all this territorial shit, it's just fucking goddamn knock it off, man. So. You know, because too many people are fucking dying. I see it all the time. Every day I'm fucking goddamn news. It's a death here and a death fucking there. And if it ain't here in fucking Illinois, in Arizona or California or fucking Louisiana, Texas, and all other parts of the fucking United States and the whole fucking world, dude, there's death everywhere, so we just gotta fucking figure out what the fuck we're gonna do, and do it, and I, get, I don't know why the hell I went off on that one. <laughs> uh, it's one of them OJ things. Uh, uh, let me see. Fucking right now, in the Nextel chase for the fucking uh, Nextel Cup, fucking um, Tony Stewart was fucking kicking ass in the last few races that fucking been happening before the end, because we're coming up to the very end where they're gonna be in Homestead, Florida, and that's going to be the final fucking race, and, uh, what the fuck was it, like, uh, who's, fuck, it, who's it first, right now in the fucking, Jimmy Johnson's motherfucking, his, like, uh, he's, like, pretty much kicking ass more than anybody, Matt Kenseth's right behind him, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Danny Hamlin, fucking, uh, Kevin Harvick won the last fucking week's fucking uh, race over there in Phoenix. Good job in fucking racing in Phoenix. Ken, Ken, uh, Kevin Harvick. Great. Uh, uh, Harvick, Harvick, Harvick. Yeah, I knew that. Kevin Harvick, I was right. But he kicked ass and won fucking the race in fucking Phoenix. So everybody who fucking attended over there, the NASCAR races in Phoenix, Arizona, I hope you guys have a good had a good time over there. I know how it was when it was over here in Chicago, because that was a fucking four or five day fucking party. So all the spectators and all the people who fucking witnessed the fucking race, I hope you guys all had fun. I can see you guys all up in the hill of fucking the uh, Arizona hills over there in Phoenix, and it made me fucking miss my home grounds and shit, because I'm from Tucson, Arizona. And this is all filmed in Tucson, Arizona, plus parts of location of uh, Illinois. So, made me feel a little homesick, but, uh, <clears throat> like I said, Jimmy Johnson, Mike, Matt Kenset, Daryl Earnhardt Jr., Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, Jeff Gordon, Jeff Byrne, Kyle Busch, 
Mark Martin, Casey Kane, all kicking ass and ready for fucking competition. Coming up this weekend, so by the time though that this fucking goddamn airs out and all, we're gonna be done. The whole race is gonna be done. But I just wanna say though, I hope everybody had a good time over there at uh, fucking uh, International Raceway over in Phoenix, Arizona. It was a long time when fucking Chicago fucking Speedway fucking goddamn raced this shit in the, in the same series, but earlier in the year and shit. Um, and that was a wonderful fucking experience. So I, I'm looking forward to next year's and shit. I got a bunch of lug nuts. I don't know what the fuck I, to do with them. Anybody want to buy any lug nuts from the actual fucking race? Because when the race was done, the next day, I went down there and I got all these lug nuts. You know what I mean? And it was a good thing that I went at the time that I did, because if it wasn't for that, hopefully fucking goddamn fucking uh, Chicago Land Speedway is not gonna fucking get me and say, we, we want our lug nuts back. Right? Can they do that if they want to? Probably. They'll be like, but I'll be like, but you guys are throwing them away, but they'll be like, well, we're... I, I don't exactly know exactly when they're cleaning up. All I know is, okay, this is how it went down, Tucson and the whole wide, wide world. When it came to the lug nuts, when I was cleaning them, they were all in a pile, but they were all in a pile like from from the whole fucking uh, pit area. All in that whole pit area, pit area is where I got all these lug nuts, and I knew right where to go for this fucking for this exact thing. Because that morning, when the fucking they were here, uh, when NASCAR was here, and when it was all done, that Monday morning when NASCAR was done, to Sunday, Jeff. Fucking Gordon won the fucking race Sunday afternoon, and come Monday afternoon or Monday, it was around 10, 11. I was like, okay, this is the time. I'm going down there right now. Went straight down to the pit area, started cleaning up, and I worked for an organization and shit and all. And it was all legitimate, but I ended up taking all these fucking lug nuts. And these are all the lug nuts from the actual fucking cars, dude. And shit, you're not. I mean. Let's go to see these fucking things. Seen is believing, right? Okay, let me show you guys. I think I showed you guys a little bit But here's a handful. Look at it. Here we have one. Yo. So, that was a fucking one of the funnest experiences of my life, which is to be able to fucking experience watching the cars go right around in the fucking circle, going top speed, 179 miles per hour. A little bit faster, a little bit slower, loud as fuck, like a concert when they're fucking flying by and shit, it's so fucking loud as the shit. Uh, fucking, I highly recommend for the fellas that were in Tucson, Arizona, all my fucking fellas like Marty and Paul and Chris Duncan and Ray and Luis and all of us. Next year maybe or whenever sometime soon, go down to the fucking Phoenix Raceway and go watch the fucking race because it's the shit. Just like the fucking cars are doing, because they're fucking the shit when they're fucking flying around. Pew, 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 pew. The shit. Um, like I said, I think I did. Did I wish everybody Christmas? Okay, I think we're almost to the very end of this fucking TV show. No? How much time have we got left? Um, uh, well. So I was informed by how much time I got left, and I just want to say that, uh, fucking, uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street release. I think we got a fucking Nightmare on Elm Street release. I don't know. <laughs> Hold on for a few minutes. We'll be right back. Please. <laughs> Is it rolling? And this is fucking tree beard, people. Fuck it, I got my tree beard, man. Life is just fucking grand. Life is just fucking great. I really don't know what the fuck I won't do without my fucking tree beard. I got my fucking tree beard. 
Thanks, Tree Beer, for making my fucking life complete. See what I mean? Because, you know what I mean? Because, like, you know, live life in the fullness and shit, dude. And, uh, sometimes, you know, when fucking goddamn, when I'm having to deal with my producer over here, and I had to deal with my director over here, and I'm having to deal with a fucking actor or a fucking, fucking, um, uh, an extra here and an extra there. You know what I mean? Fucking. Actor, 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 he got all this fucking goddamn pressure and shit, but I got my motherfucking tree beard. The tree beard fucking treats me good. What tree beard? Thanks, tree beard. So, I just wanna fucking thank the whole fucking goddamn fucking United States of the world. And the United Kingdom, because I think we got some access to the fucking whole fucking United Kingdom out there. All I gotta do is tap into our fucking webpage. We got, we got www dot whatever the fuck fucking Marty will have fucking uh <laughs> ting Marty show it right now. Uh, I want to give thanks to PlayStation Two, PlayStation Two for provi providing the Guitar Hero number two. Uh, we fucking rock out with uh, new Guitar Hero Two Classic Red SD controller, live the guitar experience. Press the fret buttons to form notes, sustains, and chords. Just like strumming strings on a real guitar. Press the strum bar 